Hello everyone, this is Gavin, and uh, welcome back to my Let's Play of the Boulder's Gate Trilogy. In this episode we'll be doing the, the final seal fights. Um, they're often considered some of the more difficult fights in the game, particularly the uh, one of them. But you'll see the tactics I use, and um, I think a party could easily replicate this. You'll also see some fails, uh, like this one. So I couldn't figure out what was hurting me so bad. I think it's the Merlith. It does a crazy amount of damage. Although I just saw one of those guys um, cast Greater Whirlwind, or maybe just Whirlwind, but anyway, one of those enemies w was getting 10 attacks per round, and that is uh, significant. Mirror Image and Stun Skin only carries you so far. Maybe for some of these fights I should have been using Mantle or Improved Mantle, uh, the ones that give you immunity to magic weapons up to like plus 3 or plus 5. I think that would have made some of these fights much easier. Okay, so the the enemy that was doing that whirlwind attack was uh, Jewin To. Yep, she was the one that was killing me. That's for damn sure. I didn't realize that uh, at the time, but yeah, Jewin To was the one that was destroying me. It might be Jai. I don't really understand Japanese or Chinese uh, translations. So I don't know why that Aramok Roman decided to do time stop and then do nothing during the time stop. Maybe he was trying to target me and I happened to be invisible at the time or something like that. Oh, I see now. He was out of my sight range and for some reason his AI tells him to stay in place. So you notice there I got knocked back by this guy just like a, a wing buffet from a dragon. Um, so I assumed that he had like the staff of the ram, but I was mistaken. And uh, later on you'll see me go back and, and pick up the staff of the ram. I couldn't remember where it was, uh, so I had to actually look it up and then um, go and grab it. It's in the Lump the Mad area. There was a dragon fight that I completely missed, so you'll get to see a dragon fight.
So I'm starting to use the Planetar's Globe of Blades. I think it does a significant amount of damage, but I want to keep her away from all my other summons because I think it can cause aggro, like bad aggro to happen. So like my magic swords will end up attacking her and, and either her or the swords will become hostile. I don't really know, to be honest. It doesn't hurt me at all because of this um, anti-magic. Uh, cloak that I have on, but that's something to consider if you're um, if you're planning on using the Planetar's Globe of Blades. I knew that Serpent Staff built into something, I was thinking that maybe it was what builds into Staff of the Ram plus 6, but uh, I was mistaken. Oh, in last episode I was wondering uh, what the chance is of instant death with the Vorpal Blade that she has, but she has that plus 3 Silver Sword that the Gif Yankee wanted uh, in Baldur's Gate 2. So it must be a 10% chance just like that Silver Sword. So again, I'm using Cespinar. I'm never going to use any of these weapons uh, that I pick up from him. The, really, the only things I'm going to be using for the rest of the game is the Staff of the Magi and um, the Staff of the Rem. Occasionally, the Fire Tooth uh, dagger that I have. So as of recording this, I've done about an hour of gameplay ahead of this, so I've done the Demogorgon fight, I've finished the Yagashira quest line, and we're about to go and do um, a Bazigal and the other person. I forgot the other person. I remember there's some really annoying uh, enemies in the Bazigal's lair. I'm hoping my character has very little trouble with it. So, Ixl Spike is not as good as I thought it was. It it has great damage, but it also gives you free action, which means you can't be improved hasted. I think it nullifies your boots of speed. Uh, without testing, I can't say with absolute certainty, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. As, just like the Flail of Ages plus 5, uh, that's why a lot of people like to keep it at plus four, um, just to not have to deal with that free action shenanigans. Free action is very good in Baldur's Gate 1 because there's a lot of webs, there's a lot of hold person spells, and uh, when you're a low level, like in Baldur's Gate 1, then those are a death trap. And uh, there's only one set of um, boots of haste, as far as I know, in Baldur's Gate 1, so um, unless your character is planning on using... Uh, the Boots of Haste and the Ring of Free Action, then uh, it's not a problem. You can put the Ring of Free Action on like Minsk or, or one of your frontline tanks that often get the spells cast upon them, and you can have your character with the Haste Boots uh, come in afterwards or come in from a different angle. So I was thinking, eventually these uh, magic swords are not going to be as useful as they used to be, the Mord swords, uh, but as of now, they've been fantastic. They've been exceptionally good, and the reason why is because they're immune to almost all damage. Uh, it seems like they can take magic damage, but enemies very rarely do magic damage. They either do elemental or physical, um, and they have, I think, 
I don't know how much magic resist, but a, a ton of magic resist. But that being said, it seems like I can kill them with my own skull traps, so I don't quite understand that. So you see right there I used time stop to um, burst down Jay Wento before she was able to do anything and that seemed like the right call. Um, I was considering using my spells and like improved alacrity and all that but um, I just decided to wail away on her and it worked out. And I didn't know these gauntlets existed, uh, but they are fantastic. They're the best gauntlets in the game for a um, for a melee fighter. So you see, they they do the exact same thing that the gauntlets I have on now do: uh, the plus one to Thaco, plus two to damage. But they also give you an extra half attack per round, which translates into a full attack per round when you um, when you cast Improved Taste upon yourself. So rather than six attacks per round, I'm getting seven uh, when I have improved haste on. So that's valuable. Basically, you can think about it, it increases your damage per round by one extra hit, assuming that you hit with all your attacks. So you might have noticed a cut there, uh, that was because I stopped the recording, went and looked up where the Staff of the Ram is, and um, decided to go and, and grab it. It's probably best left to me. So you get to see me demolish a dragon, once again. This dragon has actually has some really interesting commentary. His dialogue is, is pretty fascinating. But I was in a hurry. Uh, honestly, I'm getting ready to uh, finish this playthrough. I'm getting tired of this character. Uh, not to say that he's not fun. It's just that I've kind of figured him out, if that makes any sense. I kind of know the optimal way to play him uh, without doing, like, project image cheese and, like, wish um, stuff. So it looks like each of those skull traps does between 25 and 40 damage, um, which is extremely good for a level 3 spell. Holy cow. And I cast, I think, 5 of them at him. 
So let's say they all do base damage five times 25 is 125. That's a crazy amount of damage just from level uh, level three spells. And then Chromatic Orb does about 10, 12 damage each, and I cast four of those. So you can add another 40 damage. So 165 plus the Finger of Death, assuming it doesn't work, is another 2d8 plus one. So that's another, let's say, 10 damage from that. And then um, the two skull traps from my spell trigger, or the, maybe it was three um, skull traps from my spell sequencer, and then another two chromatic orbs. So 185, 210, 235, um, about 270 damage, 260 damage uh, before the dragon even gets out of time stop. And enough pierce magics that it can't really resist them all. Now one thing to note about this chain contingency is that I, I noticed that it activates like a, a round too late. Um, and it's kind of frustrating me. I keep using it though, for whatever reason. But anyway, uh, we're just going to go back and create the Staff of the Ram, and then that's the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Say to it. What is it? I hope this was worth it. Yeah, I'll say to it.